Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at Edgewood United Church. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Overnight, our sanctuary and our church have transformed, welcoming in the Advent season. Each Sunday, We will be sharing the stories leading to that Christmas morning to the birth of Jesus. We'll be preparing our bodies and our spirits so that we might celebrate Christmas not just on one day or one Christmas Eve night, but with the hope that we might embody the spirit of Christmas, the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love the whole year through. So let us prepare our hearts and minds as we enter into a time of worship. I'm glad they have this for short people. Good morning, everyone. Oh, come on. Good morning, everyone much better. So over 100 people from ages 2 to 80 were asked the question, what gives you hope? From the voices of different generations, hear their answers. Dogs wagging their tails. Talking with young people. Kindness from strangers. Spending time in the woods. Shrek would say, waffles, hands clasped in prayer, social progress. My son, the way my son calls everybody, buddy. The ringing of church bells, babies trying over and over to take their first step. The turning of seasons, Christian community, books, friendship with my adult children, Advocates for justice, hearing children in the pews singing, the sunrise every single morning. What gives you hope? Today, we light the candle of hope to remind ourselves that God is at work in the world. Please join me in our response. From generation to generation, God brought good news of love and compassion, justice and community. Let us rest and abide in that good news. Amen. Good morning. In God's house, everyone is welcome. Those who seem like they have it all together and those who feel like their world is falling apart. No matter who we are, there's room for us here. With that confidence, we turn to God in prayer. Speaking the truth of our lives, let us pray. God of today and God of tomorrow, you say, bring your full self. There's room for you here. But we say, 
Our lives are too messy. You say, bring your hopes and your dreams. There's room for you here. But we say, it's too risky to hope. You say, bring your grief and your prayers. There's room for you here. But we say, some things are easier to forget. God of today and God of tomorrow, we know in our hearts that there's room for us here. Forgive us for withholding our full selves from you. Forgive us for giving only our Sunday best. Help us remember today and tomorrow there's room for every story. Amen. (laughs) Family of faith, we who feel scattered are held together. We who have lost our way are forgiven and found. And we who are lonely are brought into the fold and we are told there's room for you here. From generation to generation, this is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are held, forgiven, found, and welcomed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let those of us who are in the sanctuary unite in spirit with those worshiping at home and proclaim, peace be with you. Please wave. Peace be with you. And wherever we are worshiping today, let us say out loud to those who are nearby, peace be with you and also with you.
I hate to be the person who follows that. <laughs> For the next few weeks, we will be sharing different Christmas stories in worship. And we have one this morning, so I would invite forward anyone who would like to get a good look at the pictures in this story as I read it to come join me down front. <laughs> you can have a seat up front under the table wherever you're comfortable. <laughs> This is a Christmas story called The Giveaway by Ray Buckley. There was a grove of trees where the forest grew thick. The trees had stood there for as long as anyone could remember. Their roots intertwined so that nothing could affect one without affecting them all. They were known to the inhabitants of the forest, the four-legged and those who fly, the animals as the old ones. In the middle of these trees of the old ones stood the oldest of them all, taller and broader than the others. If one stood beneath it, one could not see where its crown touched Father Sky, and smaller trees grew around its roots in safety of its vastness. It was called the Ancient One, for it had known the Creator longest of all. It was to this grove that the creatures of the forest and the plains, the four-legged and those who fly, gathered for counsel. Each had sent one speaker, the oldest and the wisest of its kind. Snow fell thick on familiar paths, and each arrived in silence, waiting with the patience of those who have seen much. When the circle was complete, they stood listening to their hearts. They have lost their way, Whooping Crane said. There's no pattern to their journey. The snow goose nodded in agreement. They've lost their purpose, Deer Mouse said softly. They do not gather seeds. They do not know who they are. Tatanka, the bull buffalo, dropped his head low. They take more than they need and give nothing back. They do not give away. They do not see long distance, the eagle began. They keep more than they can eat while some are hungry. They no longer know that they are connected. They do not know that they are beautiful, Fox said, sadly, her white coat blending with the snow. They decorate themselves with stones and hide their spirits. They think that power is what they can hold on to, old beaver pondered. They say, this is mine, and build lodges too large so that they, some, they themselves will appear big. They must make others small so that they will look big, Bear's deep voice answered. In the end, they must destroy themselves or others. They have lost their names and do not know who they are. Grandmother Turtle, who was the last to arrive, made her way slowly to the center of the council. She lifted her head so she could see all who gathered beneath the old ones. Her voice was barely audible. We must give away ourselves to them. We must speak to them in soft voices. We must remind them of who they are. She paused, lowering her head into her shell. Then suddenly she lifted her head as high as her neck would allow. I will give them my shell, she said with certainty. I will come with no protection and they can use my shell to adorn themselves. Around the circle, the council was silent. The wind did not blow through the trees. Not a single branch on the old ones fluttered. 
The forest was still as Grandmother Turtle began her walk back to the empty spot in the circle. I will teach them the patterns of life, Whooping Crane said slowly. Snow Goose and I will remind them of the seasons. I will teach them to gather seeds so that no one will need to be hungry, Deer Mouse began. I will give them what I have stored. Eagle searched the night sky and without lowering her head said, I will give them my feathers. Perhaps if I cannot fly, they will not feel small. Tatanka, the bull buffalo, stood with his legs squarely on the earth. I will give them my flesh to sustain them and my skin to warm them. I will give myself away. Each council member, in turn, rose to speak of the gift, that most costly portion of themselves, that each would give away. When the circle was complete, a new voice was heard. In the shadow of the Ancient One stood the Creator. Ho, oh, children, the Creator began softly. You will give yourselves away, but they will not know that. They will say, see what I have taken and think that they have made themselves larger. For a moment, the Creator paused. It is I who must give myself away. I must give away my protection and come vulnerable to their lodges. I must choose to become small so that they can choose to know me large. I must give away my name so that they can know their names. The Ancient One had stood silent. The sound of his voice had not been heard in many winters. Creator, how can this be? How can the great mystery become small? The Creator stood beneath the Ancient One. The shadow of the great tree became light, and the grove of the old ones became full of the presence of the Creator. A baby will be born. He will be the son of the great mystery. He will be born not where the two-leggeds are gathered, but among the four-leggeds and those who fly. He will bring light into confusion. He will bring hope into despair. He will bring love, and his name will be great. The Ancient One began to tremble, and those who fly left its old branches. The grove of the old ones moved in its quake. Creator, what can I, whose name only speaks of my age, give away to the great mystery, become baby? What can I do for my grove in the forest? The Creator turned toward the Ancient One. The voice of the Creator was low. You will be his support. You will be his place of rest. You will hold his body. You will hold him up in the beginning and the end. And the Ancient One wept, partly for joy and partly for sorrow. And that's the end of our story. It's a very different Christmas story than ones you maybe have heard before, huh? A lot more animals in this one. So let's join together in a prayer. Dear God, thank you for stories told in new ways. Thank you for gifts that we receive from those who love us, from the earth, from your animals, the birds and mammals and reptiles alike. May we give back what we have, our joy, our hope, and our love. Amen. And everyone is invited to go to church school, except for you, Peggy. You have to stay. <laughs>
Our scripture this morning is from Matthew 1, verses 1 through 17. And this story is being told also in in maybe a new way for many of us. This is from the First Nations Version, an indigenous translation of the New Testament. Here is the record of the ancestry of creator sets free, the chosen one a descendant of much-loved one, and a father of many nations. From father of many nations to much-loved one, his ancestors were. Father of many nations, he made us laugh. He'll grab her, give him praise. And his brothers, he breaks through. And his brother, first light, whose mother was fruit of palm tree, circle of teepees. Lift it up, noble relative, talks with snakes, he makes peace, moves with strength, whose mother was boastful woman, he works hard, whose mother was beautiful friend, original man, who was the father of the great chief, much loved one. From much loved one to the removal to village of confusion, the ancestor's creator sets free were. Much loved one stands in peace, whose mother daughter of seven was the, fi- was the wife of fire from creator. Big people maker, he is my father. Gifters the people, he makes wrongs right again. Creator is above, my great power. Creator has no equal, held by creator. He will be strong. He made them forget, burden bearer, good medicine, and chosen by creator, and his brothers at the time of the removal of village of confusion. From the removal to village of confusion, to the birth of creator sets free, his ancestors were chosen by creator, ask creator, born in village of confusion, father boasts in him, he builds up, he helps, Stands with good heart, stands firm, power of creator, creator helps him, gifted by creator, heel grabber, and he gives his son, who was the husband of bitter tears, who gave birth to creator sets free, who is the chosen one. And so there were 14 generations from father of many nations to much loved one, 14 more generations from much loved one until the removal to village of confusion, and then 14 more from the removal to creator sets free, the chosen one. God of all the ages. In scripture, we hear stories of people like us, ordinary people, people who long to know you, people who long to follow you, people who made mistakes, people who tried to grow, Old, young, native, immigrant, new to the faith, lifelong believer. In scripture, we hear stories of people like us. So just as you walked with them, help us to hear and remember all the ways that you walk with us. We are listening. We are grateful. We are yours. Amen. If I was to ask the congregation right now to tell the Christmas story, I imagine that we would craft a narrative that begins with an angel visiting Mary and then Joseph, and then we would describe their long, laborious journey to Bethlehem, innkeeper and all. It's a story that we know well. We've seen it acted out by our children and youth in Christmas Eve plays, it is, it is one we retell each and every year. It is the story that unfolds before us whenever we look at our own nativities that we place on our altars, carefully setting into place the holy parents and the manger and the barnyard animals surrounding them. 
but I've yet to find a nativity that includes Abraham and David and Isaac and Jacob and Judah and Perez and Tamar and Boaz and Rahab and all 42 people that are lifted up as ancestors of Jesus. That would be a very crowded manger scene. And yet, in the Gospel of Matthew, they are here. A genealogy inviting us to begin our story in a much earlier time. To trace our way through a spiritual and political history that weaves together Jesus' life with the lives of so many who came before him. It helps us orient his story in relation to others urging us to pay attention to where he came from as much as where he goes in the years to come following his birth. I am partial to the genealogy, not because it is undisputed, it is very much disputed in terms of historical accuracy, but because of the layers of history and meaning it adds to the birth of Jesus because of who it makes room for in the Christmas story. This Christmas story includes celebrated leaders like Abraham and royalty like King David. It includes Ruth, who's known for her faithfulness and loyalty to her mother-in-law, a story that is very much to be commended in a holiday season that comes with the trope of struggling with your in-laws. And speaking of in-laws, the story also includes Judah and Tamar, who are in-laws that have an illicit, deceitful affair for the sake of securing an inheritance. And speaking of affairs, the Christmas story also includes Bathsheba, who was married to Uriah and whose affair with King David results in Uriah's death as well as the tragic death of her own child as punishment for David's sins. And in both of these stories, what we might call an affair in shorthand was not the modern-day affair we might imagine. There's too much of an imbalance of power across gender and stations and political roles. These stories are more in line with modern-day sexual coercion or assault. And still, here they are, part of Jesus' genealogy. They are part of the invisible cast of characters in our Christmas nativity that reminds us who gets a place in the sacred story. It includes respected ancestors and complicated relationships alike. It includes stories of trauma and of triumph, hardship and beauty woven together in the messiness of humanity. The genealogy of Jesus does not shy away from a difficult narrative for the sake of sanitizing the Christmas story. No, it reminds us that sacred stories include everyone, the heroes and the villains, the tarnished and the celebrated. In the stories behind that long list of names in the Gospel of Matthew, I hear an invitation for us to bring our own complicated stories to the Christmas season. Each of us, whether we keep the stories buried deep in our memories or share them freely at our family tables, we've inherited a long line of ancestors that would find themselves in good company with Jesus' own ancestors. When we look into our family trees, we find stories of family members that have been pushed aside, or we find stories that evoke unresolved grief or unfinished fights, or we don't find stories at all, but instead find questions. Whatever happened to Grandma's sister? Why doesn't that cousin come home for the holidays? Why doesn't dad speak to his dad? We find questions that leave us longing to fill in the untold stories and gaps in our history, longing to bring to the surface the complications and pain that need to be spoken aloud before healing can begin. 
These stories are unique to each family. Some are made more complicated because of the gaps caused by separation or estrangement. Some are complicated because of the pain or grief from wounds that are still fresh, the story still be, being written around us. But for anyone who has wished the story of their family was more like a Hallmark Christmas movie, know that being picture perfect is not the goal of Christmas. Being faithful is the goal, and faithfulness requires authenticity of self. It requires liberation, not shaming or hiding away. It requires gentleness and compassion for the ways that we struggle together. Our worship theme this Advent and Christmas season is from generation to generation. It was chosen in honor and celebration of the messy, glorious genealogy of Jesus. And from the words of Mary, who in her song to the angel, when she finds out she is pregnant, includes this verse. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. This season, we are invited to reflect on the people whose stories we carry with us each Christmas season. Who are the people we gather with at the holidays, whose love gives us strength the rest of the year? Who are the people missing from our tables that we long to see again? Or whose blessed memory still shapes our celebrations and traditions today? What are the stories we want to pass on to our children and grandchildren? Who will we tell them stories about? What traditions will we share with them? What traditions will we make anew in the spirit of healing and justice and hope that breaks out of past family patterns and unearths old secrets? Christmas is a season when the distance between the generations seems to melt away. It is the one time a year when we all seem to know the same songs and can sing them in unison. It is a season for honoring where we've come from and in telling the whole story of the birth of Jesus, proclaim who we want to be, who we long to be, who God is calling us to be. As we tell the story of Jesus' birth, I pray we will find connections between that sacred story and our own. I pray that time will bend and shrink between Bethlehem and Lansing, between our spiritual ancestors and our modern families, that in making connections between the far-off past and the present, we'll discover a continuous narrative of God at work in the world and in our lives, drawing us into relationships that shape us, inspire us, challenge us, and change us. So part of our storytelling this month is an all-church photo exhibit. And each of you is invited to think of one or two pictures you'd like to share with the congregation. Pictures of your own generations, your ancestors or your family, whether it's your family of origin or your family by choice. When we think about the stories we tell, whose picture do you want to add to our church family album? We're displaying them out on the big bulletin board in the hallway, and we're happy to make copies of you for your photo in the office, or you can email one. So I added two pictures of my own family photos to get us started. And one of the photos is of my great-great-great-grandmother Lucy. And I did not grow up knowing Lucy's name or her story. I found her name buried in a six-page family tree that I was gifted by my father's sister. Lucy was one of dozens of names that were unfamiliar to me. Nothing noted except where she died, the year she lived, the names of her parents, the names of her husband and children. 
And it was in searching her name online that I found more of her story and legacy, and even her photo immortalized on Google. So Lucy and her family were part of an ethnic group that experienced great persecution during their lifetime. And it was the Victorian era when acknowledging that particular group or recording their stories was frowned upon, but that is exactly what Lucy did. She recorded the stories she heard as a child from her grandfather in an attempt to honor his memory. She wrote about cultural traditions and beliefs of her ancestors and preserved their history. She compiled these stories into a book that was published, and 130 years later, her book is still preserved as a part of the Smithsonian Institute. Because my great-great-great-grandmother Lucy understood the power of telling family stories, I am now able to forge a connection with the past that would have otherwise been unknown today. The Advent and Christmas season is about telling stories. It's about telling and retelling the story of Jesus' birth and finding our own way into that story. It's about stretching the expanse of time to include those stories that shaped Jesus' own family and wondering anew how we might be shaped by the ones who came before us and how we're called to shape the generations to come. This is a season of looking for God in our stories, finding God's healing presence in the painful stories and the grief-filled memories, and rejoicing with gratitude for God's presence in the tales of love and hope. This season, we are invited to look underneath the names that we speak, the ancestors, Mary, Joseph, and so many more, to find deeper meaning in the traditions we have inherited and the ones we create anew. May it be so. Amen. Let us rise in spirit or body as we sing together through the ages. You may be seated. These are the prayers of joys and concern that folks have lifted up for us this morning. 
We lift up a prayer rejoicing in all for whom Advent is the time of preparation. We lift up prayers of healing for Melissa's friend Denise as she begins her battle with breast cancer. Belinda's friend. We cry aloud prayers of concern for rising temperatures of the Earth's atmosphere. We grieve and offer prayers of comfort for a dear friend who's experiencing a great loss. We lift up prayers for a successful surgery for Sally on Wednesday. Let us continue in the spirit of prayer together. God of Abraham and Isaac, God of Tamar and Ruth, God of Mary and Joseph, we pray today hoping to catch a glimpse or a shimmer of you. We know that you are here with us, just as you walked with every generation before. So we bring you our prayers. Thank you for creating space for us. Thank you for seeing our scattered thoughts, our imposter syndrome, our fragments of doubt, and still saying, come on in. Thank you for seeing our ordinary selves with anxious concerns and unflattering habits and saying, I have bigger plans for you. Thank you for seeing our fragile egos and our uncertain relationships and saying, you still belong here. Your expansive love makes room for us to breathe. And we want to love with our lungs and hearts full. So today we pray that you will teach us how to make that same room for others. When we come face to face with stories that are different from ours, show us how to add chairs to the table. When we find ourselves face to face with stories that frustrate and test our patience, Show us how to build bridges instead of walls. When we find ourselves face to face with stories that feel unrelatable, remind us to open the door and to listen fully. From Abraham to Mary, you made room for every story, and that love continues to make room for us. Teach us to do the same for our neighbors so this world will know love. With hope we pray, using the words your son taught us to say, our creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours the dominion and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The season of Advent is a time for sharing stories. It is a time for reenacting them. It is a time of traditions, old and new. So you've heard an invitation to join our photo exhibit, our Edgewood family album, to bring your stories, the people that you love that have shaped you into that experience. And in the bulletin, and in our weekly e-notes, there are many more invitations, an invitation to 
craft with our children and youth next Sunday after church. An invitation to join the cast on Christmas Eve and acting out that journey to Bethlehem. An invitation to prayer, to worship not just on Sunday morning, but every day through devotionals or in the evening on our longest night service. Hear the invitation to bring your story this Advent. To bring it, to tell it anew. To bring this season to life together as we make that journey to Bethlehem together. Please join me in our prayer of commitment. God of hope, we give thanks for your faithfulness that extends beyond this time and place. Bless the gifts that have been given, that they may help us to bring hope in the midst of a weary world. Bless all of us here, that we may embody your hope and be participants in your work. Amen. Let us rise in spirit or body once more as we sing hymn 11, Bring Many Names.
as we go out this morning, know that no matter where your Advent journey takes you, the grace and peace of God will surely follow. Amen.